So in this week's episode, we're going to discuss what to do to prepare your boat for hurricane season. And in this case, our friend Brian is actually leaving the boat here in Lupron for hurricane season. So what do you need to do in case a storm is going to come when you're away from the boat? I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my souls for all the world to see. Yeah. I am a barefoot man. He bled a family in the sand Bear your souls Come along with me Lose your shoes, lose your blues Come along, come along with me This is Brian Hey guys Is that all you want? Yeah, no, normally chirpier than that <laughs> <laughs> I get camera shy Do you actually? I do Alright, so you're leaving your boat here in Loop Run for hurricane season yeah, so I got to go back to Canada, leave the boat for three months. So, and hurricane season starts next week, I think. It's, hurricane uh, season has already started. In the Pacific, not here no, yet. No, it started. This video goes live in oh, June. Okay. So. so, so we're now in hurricane season and leaving the boat. Uh, nobody likes leaving their boat in. No one likes leaving their boat ever because you're always going to worry about it. Truth. But, uh, <laughs> so. There's basically four things you got to worry about. You need to worry about your anchor road, how you're attached to the bottom, or whether you're going to leave it on the hard. Uh, you can leave it in the water, leave it on the hard. Either way, you need to come up with a good plan, make it sure it's super secure. Uh, windage, you have to take the, strip the boat down. Uh, a lot of people leave stuff on their boats, they just think, oh, it'll be fine. Big winds can destroy your sails, can put so much pressure that it'll rip your ground tackle out. Um, so windage is a huge, huge issue. Um, location. Location's probably the biggest one. Um, just find a good spot. Find. We're here in Lupron in the Dominican Republic and historically this place is probably one of the safest places in the Caribbean to leave a boat. I would argue the safest. Yeah, we, you know, I said probably. That's, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> it's, it's, you're gonna get a lot of people with differing opinions and say they know better places, but this kind of, this one kind of ticks all the boxes of uh, what you need in a hurricane hole. It's super closed off from the ocean's entrance. Uh, there's kind of a dog leg around to get out to the ocean, so swell will never really come in here. You'll get water rising from surge, but you won't get waves. And waves is what puts the strain on your ground tackle. Um, wind, yes, gusts and everything else, but it's the up and down with in bigger waves. So the l less waves you can have in a spot, the better. So I'm pretty close to shore over here and Generally, the winds come from the east. Hur generally. <laughs> generally. Hurricanes, you never really know which direction it's going to go from. But if, if any wind's coming from that direction, that means the center of the hurricane is north of us. And you've dropped the speed of the wind by the speed that the hurricane is traveling. So you can, you're dropping it by 20 knots, and that's a huge difference in wind speed if from 50 knots to 70 knots. If you can eliminate that but generally the biggest feature here is the fact that there's kind of mountains around and it's such a uh, Hispaniola is such a large landmass it's the second largest island in the Caribbean second and, largest yeah Cuba's the largest is it yeah Cuba's a lot bigger than Hispaniola huh. um, sorry I'll cut that out that makes me sound like an idiot <laughs> the uh, maybe I won't I don't know yeah it's most Storms will come from the south, from in the Caribbean, and hurricanes feed off of uh, warm water. So when they come across land, they have nothing to feed, they lose energy. So by the time they get to here, if it was a full-blown hurricane, by the time it gets across the whole island, it's down to maybe a tropical storm. So your wind speeds are down. Um, here we will get crazy rain, but Rain's not really an issue unless you've got a big hole in the top of your boat and you fill up with water and you sink. So, <laughs> you know, make sure your boat's sealed up well. So what's number four? Um, I can't remember. 
So while Brian is going back to Canada, me and Davey are gonna be looking after his boat for him. So he's gonna show us where he keeps everything, spare anchors, things like that. But he's also gonna do a lot of the uh, tear down stuff so that it's, it's pretty much prepared. So we don't have to do too much in case a big storm comes. Yeah, so we're on, we're on a mooring ball here and I don't know if you can see that, how large that uh, the rope is. It's probably about a four inch big rope. Um, that, sounds, that sounds weird. It's probably a four inch diameter rope. <laughs> so, and it's got good history here, so. Have you had anyone inspect it before you leave? I have not. Have you inspected it? No. Which I should. I'll dive on it today at high tide when yeah. the water's cleaner. Um, so yeah, so my anchor is here. It's ready to go. So my, and then I have a second anchor that's sitting on the deck there. I'm gonna leave that one in the cockpit. And I've run a second road here. So I've just got the chain. Oh, nice. Here. So this one can be deployed on the other side. So in case something really big is coming in, leave it, it'll still be on the mooring, but we'll run two anchors out, one that way and one almost on a 45 degree angle that way. Dig those in and then you've got Three, three, points. three points of contact. Hopefully the mooring ball holds. If it doesn't, then you you've got two, two anchors. anchors that are already in place. Because it's pretty tight in this mooring field, so you don't have much room if you start, if you break free. Exactly, you and know, if no one's on your boat. If no one's on the boat, no one's gonna see it right away. So, so I have to point out, one of the nice things here, because Brian's boat is near the entrance, um, Hypothetically, if there is a storm that comes through and if there are boats that break their moorings, which has happened in the past, um, there won't be anything that's going to drag into Brian. So as long as we make sure Brian is completely secured with possibly two extra anchors and the mooring, we shouldn't have to worry about him moving and we shouldn't have to worry about anyone moving into him. Yeah, and that's just, like Eric said, that's the big thing. Like, I'm at the front of the pack for the direction the wind normally comes from, so... Yeah, I don't have anyone over there that's going to drag into me. Right. If you're at the back of the field, any one of these boats starts, breaks free, then, you know, it becomes a pinball game. <laughs> Which we have seen before. You have seen before, yeah. Even <laughs> I, think, I think it was back during um, her uh, tropical storm Isaiah. So this is going back to 2020 um, when we were here. There was 11 boats that broke their moorings and it was like a ping pong, ping, pinball, ping, pinball game. Um, since then, there has been a lot of work done to the moorings, so I feel uh, more confident in them since then, from have you what guys, I've have heard you guys anyways. Have on yours yet? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and like I said, it's, it's the start of hurricane season right now, so it's not... I should be back before hurricane season really kicks in, so I'll be back here in September. So, it's just those first couple of months. Well, that tropical storm Isaias was in uh, July of 2020. Oh, was it July? Yeah. yeah. And what was your top wind speed? As we don't have a mast and we don't have one of those little windexy things, um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was in the 50s from what I remember. Yeah, so 50 knots in, in, here? A, in a tropical isn't storm bad. isn't bad. I mean, we saw that last summer in the Bahamas every time a squall came through. <laughs> you know? So. You know, trust the anchors and trust the, the the mooring stuff. So, and the mine, and the other thing we'll do on the mooring is we'll double up the lines. So I'm already got a line on each side. We'll run two more, and we'll add chafe gear. Uh, typically, I don't run chafe gear, um, any chafe covers, but I've been running this mooring system for a year, yep. and there's no sign of chafe anywhere. I've it's the same as what type of chafe stuff do you use? So I just actually picked up some stuff. Uh, so it's basically nylon, hollow nylon webbing. I picked up a roll of this stuff, cool. and that you just slip that over the lines. You know, it just, just an extra layer of protection. Extra layer of protection. You can double them up if you have to. Um, so these are here uh, if need be, and Davy's going to keep checking on it if he starts seeing any chafe anywhere. Uh, yeah, he'll just he can he can throw these things on. So they're here if needed. But like I said, this system I've got, there's really no chafe points, and through all the storms and all the anchoring I've been doing for the last two years, I've never chafed a line yet. 
So I'm trying to get a swivel. One thing about being on a mooring ball, especially in a place like Luperon. We spin every night. Every day sometimes. Like you're you're spinning and the lines get twisted. So that's 24 hours of twist. Yeah. And we'll probably just twist, keep twisting again. So every few days you have to go down, uh, kind of undo. Mm -hmm. The boat behind me, oh, they've untwisted theirs. So they were twisted up so tight. Well, they broke one of their lines. That the line actually it just got tighter and tighter and it broke. Trying to put a swivel on there, but I need a shackle. Popo said he's gonna, he's been looking for a shackle, hasn't found one, so he's gonna tie a couple lines if I want to put a, uh, a swivel onto it. Luckily on Barefoot, we already have a swivel on our mooring. Yeah, we you guys, got lucky. You guys got lucky with that <laughs> one. Time to deflate the paddleboard. Uh, well, so, yeah. let, so letting it dry off a little bit. <laughs> bug. 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 bug? <laughs> Even your bugs. So I live on a boat. There's less bugs. Is that true? If you lived on land, there's so many more bugs. What do you think? Do you agree with me on that one? <laughs> more bugs on land? Yeah, I don't know if I agree with you on that one. Actually... <laughs> it's just duct tape. No, it is. Well, no, it's Gorilla Tape. Okay, big difference. But it's rubberized. It's big, wide, rubberized Gorilla Tape. Huh. I actually... Everybody struggles with mass boots. The ones you buy at West Marine, the, they yeah. always leak. They're terrible. Yeah. So when I bought this boat, there was no mass boot came with it. So it's a big open gap around it. So I was using just straight Gorilla Tape for the first couple of years. And it worked pretty good. And then I found this big, wide, rubberized Gorilla Tape. And I'm like, I'm gonna try that. That's been on there for two years and does not leak a drop. Nice. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. A lot of people just take the end of the boom and drop it to the deck and strap it down. But this is pretty easy to take off. So I'm just gonna pull the pin on the end and drop it right down. And to keep my neighbors happy, because I got all these lines coming off, I don't want halyards banging on the mast all the time. Yeah, so. that's a pain in the butt. It's annoying to everybody else. We'll just come and donate a couple bungees if need be. Uh, I, don't, I find the bungees don't even really work. Um, what kind of boat is this boat, by the way? So this is 1969 Hughes 38. It's a Mark One. The summer of 69. Erica's favorite song. <laughs> Every show, every show I play, whether Erica's there or not, she will find a way to request Summer of 69. And I it's because you hate it. I don't, I don't even, I don't hate, I don't hate it. But I'm not sure if you actually, if you're requesting it because you like it or if you're just requesting it to bust my balls. A bit uh, of both. Because you, uh, because you know I'm, I'm leery to play it, let's say. You gotta be warmed up enough to play it. I have to be warmed up. It's the kind of song you play at the end of the night. Yeah. Because it, if you pull it out at the start of the night, you don't have a voice left. And, but Erica's like, first song. Summer is 69! Summer is 69! <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so it was a Hughes 38 from 69. 1969 Hughes 38. A lot of people mistake it for an Allberg 37. They have pretty much the same cabin top so hot. It is crazy hot. Is it just a heat wave? Is know. it just a heat wave or is summer actually officially begun? Because it's been freaking hot for the past five days and everyone keeps saying it's a heat wave, but it's still hot it's, and it's supposed to be cooler today. So yeah, I, I don't think know. This is going to be more or less the norm for the next little bit. Okay, come around here. Can you see that? Okay, you're friends with Dan and Kika on Sailing Uma, si. correct? So, Dan sees this. This is the this is the identical boom, and had the same gooseneck that they had, and they broke their gooseneck right off, or the track pulled out uh, somewhere off of Cape Hatteras quite a few years ago. And I was following them, and uh, I've never liked my system, so I copied Dan's design and made a whole new gooseneck. Ooh. Ready. So, and it works set. really good. Okay. Nice. That's easy. Yep. 
And... Oh dear. You can only go so far, because it's going to hit that. <laughs> I understand. Okay, I'm going to walk your way. Okay. So Brian is used to doing everything on his own. He's a solo sailor. Took you, what, eight days to get here from West Palm? Yeah, it went straight. 176 hours nonstop. Okay, so after first part, um, the mooring and ground tackle, um, second is windage. So for windage, Brian has taken off all his sails and... There's only two, but yeah, all of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah, I've got the sails off now. Um, they were taken ashore. Taking them down by yourself is a little tricky. And you can't flake them neat. This boat just doesn't have enough deck space. So Carl and I went into uh, the marina to, yesterday. They got a big flat spot and flaked them out. So they're stored down below. I had put them up in the rain. They were covered in salt from the passage here. <laughs> like just halfway up the sail was covered in salt. So this is a little key for leaving your boat. Make sure nothing is you're putting down below is still salty. And make sure it's rent because it will attract moisture and, and, then, and then you come back and everything is wet everything's still wet and moldy there's so much it's so humid here that every night if there's salt on the deck every night it looks like it poured rain yeah. um your cushions if you have if you have salt on your skin and you sit on your cushions that night you will have a wet spot there because it will suck moisture out of the air to the salt um so yeah that's a that's a big key a lot of people kind of forget and I'm gonna ask you guys if you can, if you if we know there's like nice days like this and there's gonna be no rain, come over, and pop those hatches, just flip the butterfly hatch open, flip the front hatch, just to let some air. <laughs> as long as we remember to close them, if we get a torrential downpour, because then we'll be like, yeah. oh crap. <laughs> Only if it's like for, if it's possible, like just once in a while. It doesn't be every day, yeah. but just let the boat air out a little bit, because there's kind of no way. There's stuff that's. It's gonna be hot. It's just it's just gonna be hot down there. It's always and hot. It's always hot. Uh, but yeah, the windage is a big thing. So sails are off. Just took the boom down. Yeah. Uh, so I'm on the fence whether I'm gonna take I'll leave, take this panel out of the for sure. My solar panels, my big solar panels up top here. They're kind of a pain, but I think I'm going to just to save Davy and Erica having to deal with it. If a storm if comes, a storm. if a storm comes, I'm gonna take this off. So, take these panels off, and then take the canvas off, and the whole thing will just the frame just folds down and will just tie down to the stern rail. And once that's done, then my only other question is what I'm doing with my dinghy. <laughs> Whether I deflate it and try and put it down below. <laughs> mm. I reckon just put it here in the cockpit. Yeah, Erica thinks I should just leave it here in the cockpit, but I don't think that's the best. I could just tie it on the deck. It will probably be fine on the deck. It's a little bit of windage, but it's down low, and I've got It'll be lower here. all the other windage. It would be lower here, but it is in the way if you have to get on the boat. I suppose. And I, actually, I don't think, I don't think it would fit between the wheel and the stay. Yeah, it would. No, I don't think so. It's only that's, like seven feet. Yeah, but that's six feet right there. My arms are six feet. Yeah, it wouldn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I'm going to do, I filled my fuel tank. Uh, you kind of want to leave your fuel tank full if you can. It le leaves less air, less condensation, uh, keeps moisture from forming. Did you put biocide stuff in it? I'm not diesel. I am gasoline. So oh, that's right. I don't have t an issue with. Uh, that's why Brian has to sail everywhere he goes, and sometimes he sails to Africa in order to get here. Yeah, I I don't go in a straight line very often. That said, the whole trip, 764 nautical miles from West Palm to here, I only tacked once, five miles out. I did two mile tack because I wasn't going to make the harbor. But I only burned maybe. 
four or five gallons of gasoline between here and West Palm. That's not too bad, is it? I don't have a 12 gallon tank. <laughs> but what I do is uh, I will run the engine and I will flush it with fresh water. So I will dump my fresh water tanks into the bilge. I have a tee off my water intake and I'm gonna throw some vinegar through it. So I dump vinegar, bottles of vinegar in the bilge, mix with the water, suck it into the engine, let the engine run until the fuel runs out. I turn the fuel switch off and let it run until it just quits. And that clean, that keeps everything out of my carburetor. Uh, leaves some fresh water and vinegar in the cooling system and prevents corrosion. Gets over if, it's, if I time it right and get the vinegar in there, it'll actually clean up my thermostat and stuff like that. That gets a little rusty over time with the salt water. So yeah, so those are all the little things that you do, and then just wish. Cross your fingers and hope for the best. Yeah, and in in this in the end, like you can prepare all you want, but in a big enough hurricane, it's not going to matter. Right. Um, but that could be anywhere. You could get that huge hurricane up in Maine yeah. at some point. It could be up in Halifax. You're going to get a huge hurricane. You you never really know. You're playing the odds for sure, and you're limiting potential effects. But prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Yeah. That's uh, that's the best way you can look at it. Okay, let's make this quick. It's hot. Um, so I've just come over to Brian's boat this morning to open it up, air it out a little bit. It doesn't look like it's going to rain this morning, but we'll keep an eye on it. So Brian did end up taking down his solar panels and his canvas. Um, we can always put down the frame if need be, but it's pretty good as it is now. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode where we go over what you should do to prepare your boat for hurricane season, especially if you're leaving it um, somewhere unattended. Lubron is a great spot, the location is perfect, and we are here to keep an eye on it as well, which helps. So, happy hurricane season! Stay tuned for more, coming soon. So I forgot to say when I was over on Brian's boat this morning, um, that Brian does have a YouTube channel as well, Journey of Farfalla. I'll put a link in the description below. He is also the one who wrote and gave us permission to use uh, Barefoot Man our theme song. Um, so thanks again, Brian. We love it. Um, and we can't wait to see you back here soon. Well, only three months away. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, you got a wet dog on your boat. Hey, Fox. Fox, where's Uncle Brian? Where's Uncle Brian? Where is he? No, he's not in the water. <laughs>